obviously you um, found your career or you went into your career kind of, I guess, straight after school and like you're quite young when you started, uh, started studying it. Um, and now you've obviously shifted on you, you're a coach and you do, you know, a few other things as well. Um, what are your thoughts, right? On what age we should sort of be choosing our profession? The, here's the thing. When I, when I hear the word age, I think there's, well, there's a chronological age and then there's like this mental slash intellectual age and the two of them, there's no correlation. Mm. Right. And as soon as we start to think about age at which we should be doing something in terms of chronological age, that's where you can set yourself up for a lot of suffering and a lot of uh, pain and, and a lot of regret. Right. Because the moment that certain key things happen in one person's life compared to another person's life, it's going to be completely different, mm. right? And who's to say that you have to have all your ducks in a row at this chronological age, right? And who's to say that you have to have it all figured out when you are blank years old? And who's to say that anyone has it figured out at all, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? With the, with, the, with, the, with the pace of change in today's world, the working world, the marketplace, all these industries, things are constantly changing. So you have it figured out now, one year later, all of a sudden you have to figure it out all hmm. over again. Mm -hmm. Right. So to say that you have to pick your profession at a certain age is kind of like setting yourself up for disappointment because you can't possibly do that. And, and nowadays careers are not 20, 30, 40 year tunnels. Yeah. Not, no, professions are not that way right mm. so then when even if you pick something and you go all in with it which is what you should do if you pick something you go all in all in and then one year later two years later you decide you know that's not quite what aligns with me i'm going to change it up here or i'm going to tweak that or i'm going to completely go a different path it doesn't mean you failed at picking a, a profession mm. yeah. right yeah. as long as you have a rationale for why you're changing course. As long mm. as you have that rationale and you can vocalize it and you can communicate it, it doesn't mean that you failed. It doesn't mean that at all. It can be one of your most, most valued successes that you changed direction. That totally. you did. Yeah. Instead of saying, I'm choosing to be an engineer and this better be my career for the rest of my life. Rather than locking oneself in like that, it's more about keeping an open mind about what are my blind spots. I'm picking this today and I'm going to go all on this today, but every day, every week, every month, I'm always going to be constantly evaluating what can I do better? What are my blind spots? That's so, the approach. So how do you, how do you help people then to, to understand or, or just to kind of build up uh, the courage to actually um, deal with this change and, and have this adaptability because most people say they want to do things, they don't do it. But the reason they don't do it is because I guess it's fearful, you know, fearful of, of maybe failure or what other people might think. What, uh, what do you say to people when they say that to you? Yeah, I say that it's because we're trained in, like we are trained as a society to always focus on the strategies and tactics. Right. We're, we're always trained to think about, okay, what am I going to do next? Mm. And what am I going to do? And what are the strategies to get there? I'm not, I don't have what I want right now, but I want to have this. So what do I got to do? What are the strategies to get to have that? Right. And what they're forgetting is that you can't have unless you're, you, you become, you, know, you got to mm. be, you got to become who you need to be in order to have the ability to do what you need to do. And then you can have, Right. So I always say you got to start with what I call internal positioning. We're always so worried about how we position ourselves out there, how we're going to position to ourselves to potential employers, how we're going to position to ourselves to collaborators, to people mm. who might have a real influence on our professional future. But we forget that before we can position ourselves externally, we have to position ourselves internally. And mm. when we have a strong inner game, that's <laughs> where things get powerful out there because we're becoming, we are focusing on becoming. I mean, who is it? I think it was Oprah who said that, you know, the, some of the most successful 
entrepreneurs and business owners out there, some of those multimillionaires, the, the, the most successful people out there, they spend 80% of the time working on who they are. Mm. Right? So it's the who that's more important than the what I do and what I'm going to do. Yeah. So, so you're implying like personal development, uh, getting to know yourself uh, inside out, you know, th- this kind of stuff. Is, is, that, is that kind of what you mean? So that's part, part and parcel of it. Personal development is part of it, but it's this whole bigger umbrella of an inner game, sort of like a EQ, mm. right? An emotional quotient. There's a mindset to it as well. There's that, there's the knowing and having a high degree of self-awareness, right? And therefore knowing that there's a choice to everything, mm-hmm. especially how you respond to situations that come your way. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and so many people like, this is what I find, like I, the, for me the, and Craig, we talk about this a lot, is like the, there's a lack of self-awareness like in, in so much of like what, what people do, how they talk to, to others, how they, uh, how they behave, um, just, just, there's just a lack of it, you know what I mean? And, um, but, but, but what, what advice do you have for people, I guess, to, to sort of have more self-awareness? Because it's a difficult one, isn't it? I mean, you basically, it's your own journey. You need to realize that you need to sort of find out more about yourself. But like, you know, do you have any kind of advice or whatever to people to, to sort of start that off? Yeah, I actually, I love questions like that. I really do. Because this is what I live for is to mm-hmm. help people to expand and to grow and to expand that into living lives of fulfillment, right? And so self-awareness is a really tricky thing because there's like these, there's four pockets of what we can know of knowledge out there, right? There's things that you know that you know, right? Mm. There's things that you know you don't know. There's things that you don't know you don't know. And the fourth one is the most dangerous, is, is the scary one. There are things that are just unknowable. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Right. And so having a high self-awareness to me means, you know, the boundaries of where your knowledge begins and where it ends. So you're able to have clarity. You're able to ask the right questions to know, is there something that I don't know that I don't know possibly, Mm -hmm. or is there something, is it possible that there, there are, there are things that I know I don't know. And are there things that I think I know, but I actually don't know. (laughs) Mm. Right? So one of the most dangerous things is those people who say, oh, I know, I know. And so therefore they close themselves off from further learning, further development, because they say, I know that already. Yeah. Right? So the self-awareness comes from having that, uh, I can't think of the word, it's not humility. I kind of wanted to, to, to reach for the word humility. It's not really humility. I, I guess it is in the sense that you're saying that, well, there's so much I don't know, but it's more like, um, it's more like this. Uh, this holistic, yeah, a holistic perspective where there's so much that you don't know and can't know, but it's okay Mm -hmm. because it's better actually to not know and ask the right questions Mm -hmm. than to think you know and to stop it at that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. 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 When you've got, when you waking at dawn, packing the gear, September tour, and up in the air, stop at the toll, digging for change, snowy Cape Fold mountain range. Gotta be quick, so 